Have you seen those trends on the internet or TikTok endorsed by celebrities and influencers that show you how they got their pearly whites and uh, the steps they went through to get them? What if I were to tell you most of them are not that effective and some of them can actually harm your teeth? I'm Dr. Brent Langston, experienced prosthodontist and director of dental implant and aesthetic specialist in Brookhaven, Georgia. In this video, we're talking about the biggest mistakes to avoid when whitening your teeth because I'm here to help you watch your mouth. First, let's quickly recap what causes teeth to discolor. Repeated long-term exposure to staining materials will cause your teeth to discolor over time. Many of these culprits are actually normal foods you find in your everyday diet. Before we dive into those, let's talk about what causes them to have such a massive impact on your tooth shape, and that's overall oral hygiene. If you don't have a good home care regimen and don't regularly clean the debris and the materials off your teeth, you're gonna leave those teeth bathed in those staining materials. It's gonna cause staining and breakdown to worsen over time. So proper oral hygiene is the key to preventing stain, especially if you can rinse your mouth out after exposure to certain foods and beverages. As far as beverages go, the main things that will cause discoloration, red wine, unfortunately, coffee, tea, and even carbonated beverages and sports drinks, which have a lot of acid and a lot of food additives to give them color. Some popular foods that can cause discoloration include blueberries, blackberries, pomegranates, dark chocolate, um, even certain spices like cumin can cause discoloration. This isn't to say that you should avoid those. Everybody loves wine, everybody loves chocolate, but just make sure after you have them, you rinse your mouth out so they don't stay on the teeth and cause discoloration. So let's get into the mistakes. Mistake number one, using heavy duty whitening toothpaste on a daily basis. I know one of the more popular Trinity toothpaste are the black toothpaste or the charcoal toothpaste. One of the major problems with those is they usually don't have fluoride, which helps protect the teeth and helps rebuild the enamel, but also they have really large particles, which can be abrasive. So while the first time you use them, they might do a good job of, of cleaning off surface debris and removing stain, the problem is they leave scratches and minor defects in the enamel, which are prone to picking up more stain down the line. And if repeated over time, those minor grooves can get bigger and bigger and lead to problems. Mistake to avoid number two, starting a bleaching process without consulting with your dentist first. Whitening when done correctly and on healthy teeth can have a profound impact without at all negatively affecting the health of the tooth. Unhealthy teeth, or teeth that have large fillings need to be addressed beforehand because even though the tooth around the filling might change color, you might all of a sudden be left with this beautiful tooth with an old discolored filling that matched the old shade and it has to be replaced. Not all teeth are healthy enough to handle bleaching. Uh, if you have existing decay and you try and bleach the teeth, basically you're putting that bleach with a direct path to the nerve and that can lead to sensitivity. Uh, in extreme cases, it can lead to root canals possible tooth loss. So it's always important to have a good healthy evaluation and checkup to make sure your teeth are good candidates for bleaching. Something else that needs to be considered is actually the thickness or strength of the teeth. Um, we have a lot of patients that have very thin teeth and when they bleach it actually causes part of the teeth to become transparent. So you actually see through the tooth into the back of the mouth and it gives it actually a darker appearance. So even though you're trying to lighten them, you're causing them to appear darker. And there are ways to work around this, but this is something that would definitely come as a negative surprise if you weren't planning for it. Mistake number three, overusing whitening strips. Whitening strips are a great option for patients that need minimal whitening. And I have a lot of patients that unfortunately think if one hour is good, five hours is better. Or if 30 minutes is good, I might as well wear them overnight. The problem with that is the materials are just meant to be exposed for a short amount of time and then rinsed off your teeth so the tooth can rest and remineralize. If you keep that material on the teeth overnight or for prolonged periods of time, you might cause permanent damage to the enamel. That damaged surface of the enamel can lead to not only further staining, but also increased sensitivity and the possibility of needing fillings down the road. Mistake number four, using those one size fits all whitening trays. Dental offices have you come in and take impressions and make custom trays. And the reason we do this is because these are designed to hold the specific amount of bleach directly onto the tooth surface that we want whitened. Using a tray that's one size fits all means that you're going to have not an intimate fit between the tray and the tooth, and that's going to allow the majority of that bleaching material to actually wash away. This also causes a decrease in the effectiveness. You actually end up swallowing a lot of that bleach, which is not ideal. Using a tray that's one size fits all also causes the saliva to sneak in between the tray and the tooth and wash away a lot of that bleach. That's negative for two reasons. Number one, you have less bleach, so it's less effective, and number two, that bleach has to go somewhere and you end up swallowing it, which is not ideal. The other problem with using a bleaching tray that isn't custom made to your teeth is that excess bleach can actually leach out and get onto the gum tissue. And that bleach material is pretty caustic to gum tissue and can cause erosion, it can cause 
lesions, it can cause flaking of the gum tissue, uh, and these are all things that can be avoided with a custom-made tray. Mistake to avoid number five, not brushing and flossing before bleaching. If you don't have a nice, fresh enamel surface to adhere the bleach to, it's obviously going to be less effective. I like to compare it if you tried to get your car repainted after going muddy. It's just not going to work. Mistake number six, eating acidic fruits or other foods to help whiten the teeth. There's a common misconception that eating uh, limes, lemons, grapefruit, things that are aggressive to the enamel, or even raw spinach that can etch the teeth are a good way to whiten your teeth. While it's true that temporarily they can have an impact on the tooth structure, they can give it the appearance of whiteness, usually due to either dehydration or minor chemical changes, it's not a permanent fix, and it can actually cause damage to that enamel structure. The constant application of fruit acids to the tooth will cause enamel erosion, and that can lead to sensitivity and possible decay. Mistake number seven, treating bleaching like it's a one-time thing. Bleaching is a process. Generally, it takes about 10 to 14 days for your teeth to reach the ideal shade. And then in a couple days, they will rebound back a small percentage. Usually, this is maintainable depending on your diet and your lifestyle. If you drink a lot of coffee, red wine, eat a lot of blueberries, they might pick up that stain a little bit quicker. But generally speaking, every year or so, you might need to touch up for a day or two to get those teeth back to that ideal whiteness. Professional cleaning should be a part of your routine if you want nice white teeth. Sometimes, having white teeth is not enough to improve your smile. If you have misshapen, chipped, worn, unideal teeth, you might need something a little bit more involved. In that case, dental veneers might be the right treatment for you. So watch my next video, The Complete Beginner's Guide to Dental Veneers. Until the next time, this is Dr. Brett Langston helping you watch your mouth and don't forget to subscribe. Mistake number, uh, what is?